That's all, folks. The preseason is officially in the books. So who or what stood out to me the most in Friday night's preseason finale versus the 49ers? That plus more comes up on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for August 26, 2024. You are Locked On Raiders, your daily Las Vegas Raiders podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. And as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, you know we appreciate that. The show grows each and every day, and that's because of your support and because of my man Ari, who does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube and looking good. We definitely appreciate him. We shout him out. He's on Twitter, at Ari Produces. I'm on Twitter as well, at your boy Q254. And if you want to be a part of the show, as many of you do, you can hit us up on the Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Plenty of feedback from the game on Friday night, players that stood out through the course of the offseason and training camp, and of course the preseason games, and some thoughts on who can make the team and, and who might not make the team. Plenty of feedback coming up in segment number three, both your calls and texts. Segment number two, who stood out to me in a preseason game number three versus the 49ers on Friday night, good and bad. We'll break it on down and talk about that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here in segment number one, just a few news and notes of the day from over the weekend, and we'll jump right into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. Off top, Really exciting to uh, be able to put the preseason in the in the review mirror. It's a done deal record. It's all three games uh, in the books. And really, the Raiders came out of it with no major injuries, which was uh, awesome. That's the one thing that you don't want in training camp and preseason. You don't want to have any major injuries. There was a couple minor ones here and there. And, of course, the one I mentioned before uh, from Jeff Foreman, the wide receiver, when he hurt his uh, knee there in Costa Mesa. But that was probably the biggest uh, injury that the Raiders had as far as uh, as far as we know through training camp and preseason. But Friday night was the preseason finale at Allegiant Stadium. I was doing the pre, pre-game show and the post-game show, and I thought Eddie Pascal from the Raiders, Raiders.com and Silver and Black Productions, was going to be my co-host for the pre-game show because he had done that the first two pre-game, uh, pre, pre-game shows. And uh, it wasn't that way. On Friday, it was actually Richie Incognito. I found out later in the afternoon before the show that Richie Incognito was going to join me there at Allegiant Stadium at the Torch, and that was fantastic. I actually had a couple of little sound bites from Richie Incognito that I wanted to play, but they were too long. And I just knew that there was no way that I was going to be able to get that into the show Plus talk about, you know, the game and, and the calls and texts. I knew I wasn't going to be able to squeeze everything into it, but uh, Richie was fantastic. Maybe I'll be able to bring a couple of those sound bites, maybe even tomorrow's show. Uh, some really good stuff from him, uh, just him being out there at Costa Mesa, working with the offensive line. Talked about, you know, helping out mature Colton Miller when he came along uh, with the Raiders. And now Colton Miller is going to have the task to help mature JPJ and help him get into the mix. And, you know, it's just some really good stuff. So uh, that was fun. I really thank the Raiders for giving me the opportunity to do the pregame show and the postgame show. Met a lot of you, Raider Nation, out there at Allegiant Stadium that was, uh, you know, in the building, came by the torch and said, what's up? Took a picture with myself and, and Richie. I thought that was uh, really cool. So just glad that, you know, now the preseason's over and it's all about uh, working on the 53-man roster, which, remember, it has to be cut down by 1 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, they got to go from 90 to 53 quick, fast, and hurry. So that's not going to be easy. And there was a lot of guys on uh, on Friday night that really made a, a case for why they should stick on the roster. Some of it is going to be warranted and, and rewarded, and some of it's going to be too little, too late, right? Just That's just the name of the, the game, and it goes from 90 to 53, and you can't keep everybody. There will be a lot of guys that will be put onto the practice squad, but uh, at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be looking for work uh, on Tuesday, following Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So the game ends in a 24-24 tie, um, <laughs> which it was funny because I forgot that the overtime rules were, or there were no overtime in preseason. I forgot that they had changed the rules. So when the Raiders lined up and kicked that field goal, I was in the press box thinking, you can't kick a field goal, you can't tie the game, and then realize that, oh, wait, hold on, there's no overtime in preseason that drive that led the Raiders to that that uh, field goal at the end to tie the game uh, generated by Carter Bradley was really a good drive 
I got to give him a lot of credit for that. It was a, a two-minute drill. The Raiders' defense had bowed their necks up uh, and held the, the 49ers. I thought AP did a really good job with, uh, with timeouts and, and giving the Raiders' offense an opportunity. Uh, and really, it was the Carter Bradley and Ramel Keaton show the whole drive until the very end when Daniel Carlson had to kick the field goal to tie the game up. And the one big mistake that Carter Bradley made uh, on that drive was clocking the ball on third and 15. When he clocked the ball on third and 15, I was like, wait, hold on. What are you doing, right? I mean, because there's 29 seconds left in the game. He had just taken a sack, which you're not supposed to do that either. But you've got to be able to, you know, get up to the line of scrimmage and and get another play and and try to – because they're going for the win. They're not going for the tie. But when he clocked the ball, I looked down and saw Antonio Pierce, and he just kind of had his head up in the air just knowing that that was a mistake by the quarterback. So they rolled out Daniel Carlson, kicked the field goal, tied the game 24-24. I'll say this. For a preseason game, it was pretty entertaining. Right? It was probably the most entertaining preseason game the Raiders had uh, throughout the course of the three games that they had. So uh, I wasn't mad at that. Obviously, the starters didn't play. A lot of guys didn't play. And again, we'll talk about that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. But on Saturday, uh, we did get to meet with Antonio Pierce, and he had a couple thoughts on what he saw from the preseason game on Friday night and also just the preseason in general. So the first sound that I want you to hear is just what he wants to see the team improve on from what they did in the preseason and then also what he liked about the team in the preseason. Yeah, I like this as, us to improve uh, the line of scrimmage, both on the offensive line and defensive line. We talk about winning that and being physical and dominating up front. And uh, that didn't show that didn't show up in the preseason. And uh, one thing I was you know, really excited about was just our return game. I think Trey Tucker and McAllister both showcased that they got some big play uh, ability. We saw last night, obviously, with McAllister did a great job returning that for us, but uh, – Trey Tucker as well. The trenches obviously are something that is very important, right? You got to always worry about the trenches, offensive line and defensive line, especially when it comes to the run game. And again, the Raiders gave up 130 something yards on the ground. And early in the game, they had given up like 60 something yards. I think the Niners were averaging about seven yards a carry. Now they had their starters in there on the Raiders did not, but at the same time, it's, it's a trend, right? 142 week one versus the Vikings, 132 against uh, the Cowboys. And then what 130 or something like that against the uh, 49ers. So uh, clearly that's something that he's going to focus in on. He's already said that it's not the standard. They've got to do a lot better when it comes to that, but the special teams, especially the punt return uh, was phenomenal. Right. And it's been phenomenal all three games. It wasn't like it was just, uh, you know, Tyreek McAllister on uh, on Friday night when he took the one to the house, you know, the 82 yard or 81 yards to the house. Uh, it was Trey Tucker. It was DJ Turner. I mean, every game you saw some big returns in the punt game. So that was something that I was really pleased to see. And clearly Antonio Pierce was as well. So then he was asked about his priorities, you know, as cutdowns approach Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, where is his priorities for the guys that are kind of at the back end of the, the roster, the guys who will make it and the guys who won't? To me, special teams is a four, uh, forefront for me, uh, just to make sure that we're sound here. We got two uh, kickers that can really change the game with Daniel and AJ. Um, but really the depth, it goes back to, you know, Vincent's question earlier, you know, he asked about the depth of corner, just Constantly improving that room, you know, between wide receivers and DBs, you constantly lose those guys throughout the season. And you want to have depth. You want to feel good about that. And I think just, you know, overall front, just, you know, when the game comes down to like it did, you know, last night and teams are running the ball and you want to stop the run in, in certain situations or four minute or say we got the, you know, the ball down the red zone, we want to run it in. You want to, you want to finish those drives the right way. And those are the things that they want to improve on. I know Tom sees it the same way. Um, but to, be, to act like we're going to just sit there and flip this roster uh, over the next 48 hours, that's not going to happen. You know, a lot of the guys that's going to be on our practice squad and that make our 50-man roster are here. Now, you know, like everybody in the league, there's going to be anywhere from five to eight players that, you know, that's going to be changed and, and that's going to happen you know, throughout the season, just constantly, you know, rotating that, that, that bottom part of the, the roster. Got to be able to play special teams. Got to be able to play special teams. Got to be able to play special teams. That's one of those big areas of, uh, you know, just emphasis. Like if you can't do something where you're the best at it, you better be able to do multiple things. It's, it's just that simple. If you're going to stick in the league, you've got to be able to do a whole lot of things unless you are the very best at that position. And when you're at the back end of the roster, you're not the very best at that position. And then one other soundbite that I, I want to play here on segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast is uh, about Brandon Faison. He's a guy that was competing with Ja'Cory and Bennett, and uh, he just hasn't been out there because of injury. And that's just unfortunate because that feels like now two years in a row where he's just been banged up in training camp, and then you just don't see anything from him. So here's Antonio Pierce talking about the evaluation of Brandon Faison. Yeah, we got to get Brandon on the field. I can't even evaluate him um, because we haven't had him out there. So it's, it's just tough, you know, and it's put a lot of these younger corners out ahead. You know, it's good for them in, in preseason and, and training camp to get reps. But, you know, 
I'm not a believer of, you know, throwing young corners out there early if they're not quite ready. Um, so it'd be good to get Brandon back, you know, in a fold and healthy. So it's just, again, just not a guy that's out there, not available. I say it all the time, and I know it's cliche and people hate to hear it, but your best ability is availability. And Brandon Faison is just not available. And I'll tell you what, uh, and I admit when I'm wrong, I have no problem doing that. Uh, that was one of my big wrongs <laughs> is thinking that the depth at the cornerback position was okay. I was also counting on Brandon Faison to be a guy that was going to compete uh, in training camp in the preseason with Ja'Cory and Bennett. And then when it was obvious that JB had won that job and was playing better, I was thinking that, okay, well, Brandon Faison will be good depth, and he's just not there. He's just not available. Uh, I also thought MJ Devonshire and, and DeCam Richardson were further along than they were. Um, you know, that's the difference when you're playing against yourself in, in training camp. You're going up against yourself every day in training camp, and then going up against another team. You're starting to notice a lot more when you go up against another team. And so, yeah, the, the depth, I don't remember what call it was, but someone called and asked about the depth. And I was like, ah, oh, it's all good. It's all good. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not. The depth in the cornerback room is not good. Uh, like I said, that was one of my big wrongs. Uh, I have no problem admitting that. Uh, so the Raiders definitely need to go ahead and, and focus in on that, especially since AP said that he's not, you know, he's not a guy that wants to go ahead and just put young guys out there before they're ready. Young out there before they're ready. So uh, they've definitely got to do something. Tom Telesco will work the waiver wire. Tom Telesco will make sure that he brings in some depth, whether it's a guy that's a free agent right now or maybe someone who gets cut Tuesday uh, at 1 p.m. or by Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So, uh, yeah, that's something uh, area of the team that's got to get fixed up, you know, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And honestly, it's probably on defense, it's probably those two areas, depth of the cornerback position and the defensive line's got to do a lot better job of stopping the run. If they got if they can do those two things, if they can address those two things, this defense will probably be where it needs to be. But let's go ahead and talk about who stood out in preseason game number three of the season finale and, uh, you know, who made a name for themselves and a case for themselves to make this Raiders 53-man roster. We'll talk about that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. And on LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and even quicker. Right now, post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to talk about Friday's game, really focus in on it, talk about some guys that stood out to me, guys that made a name for themselves, guys that are going to make the decision for Tom Celesco and AP and the rest of the front office uh, tough to, to either release them or keep them on the 53-man roster or hope that they can make their way onto the practice squad. And, you know, going into the game, I want to see what Tyree Wilson was going to look like. He didn't play. I was surprised by that. I was really shocked that Tyree Wilson didn't play. And that could be one, one or two things. They're comfortable with where he's at right now, which is probably the most likely key, that they're comfortable where he's at and they just realize it's going to be baby steps with him and he's not going to just all of a sudden pop overnight. Or they already know what he's going to be and they're not happy and maybe they're trying to move him. I mean, it's just, it's, and I know that sounds harsh for a guy that was just drafted in the first round a year ago, but Tom Telesco didn't draft him. So maybe they're trying to move him. I doubt that they'd flat out release him. I'm sure that they would rather try to trade him than anything else. But most likely it'll be what I said first, that they're just okay with him coming along at a slower pace, right? AP mentioned after the game on Friday night that, you know, some guys you'll look at him and say, oh, he's been in the league two years and he hasn't done anything. He's a bust. And sometimes it takes longer for guys to develop. So that's obviously what's going on with Tyree Wilson. It's, uh, it's taken more time for him to develop. So uh, I'm sure, as I said on Friday, that he's going to make the roster. But it kind of makes you, you, you wonder. And, and like I said, I was really surprised that he didn't play on Friday at all. Uh, DJ Glaze just wanted to see him go out there and get some burn. Uh, Carter Bradley versus Nathan Peterman. Uh, it was interesting to me that Nathan Peterman actually got to start. And Carter Bradley was in the second half of the game. Uh, I think they both did some really good things. And I probably would say that 
Nate Peterman is probably going to be quarterback number three because he knows the system of Luke Getze. Carter Bradley will probably be a uh, practice squad guy if if I had to guess right now. But that's that's kind of uh, my feelings on, especially when you see Nate Peterman get the the start of the game instead of the second half where Carter Bradley was. So I kind of feel like that that's just what it is. Uh, Dylan Lobby, six round pick, running back out of New Hampshire. You want to talk about being disappointed? I made a bet with Vic Tafer that he was going to get some really good offensive snaps this season. I think I'm going to lose that bet. Uh, Dylan Lobby got to start at the running back position, had three carries. I think he had like 12 yards, so he hadn't done a whole lot of anything. Then caught a pass out of the backfield, which is what he's going to be expected to do quite a bit. And then he, he got hit and fumbled. And so he never went back in the game after that. And after the game, Antonio Pierce said, you never want to get pulled when cuts are right around the corner. And Dylan Lobby got pulled. I honestly would not be shocked if he doesn't make this roster. I wouldn't be shocked if they just flat out release him. Uh, he most likely will probably be a practice squad guy, but I just don't see him being that valuable, especially on uh, even on special teams where that's where he's going to you know butter his bread. I think that there's more dynamic players that can be in the kick return game. So maybe uh, what I thought it was going to be his specialty is not going to be his specialty after all. I really have a lot of questions now about Dylan Lobby, but when he fumbled and didn't return to the game, it told me a lot. Uh, about him. MJ Devonshire and DeCam Richardson just want to see them out there continue to get reps, 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 because that's what they're going to need. Right? There was a play where MJ Devonshire actually looked on Debo Samuel, but Debo had a nice little push off at the end and a uh, slight push off, right? I mean, and wide receivers are really good at that, the good ones, uh, you know, and they were able to complete a pass uh, early in the game, Brock Purdy to Debo Samuel. Uh, but actually, MJ Devonshire had some really good coverage on that play, but they clearly both need uh, time to continue to grow. And as AP said, he doesn't like to put young corners out there before, you know, they're ready to play. Now, the guys that did stand out, right? I mean, those are guys that I was looking at. Tyreek McAllister, the uh, man, you want to talk about a playmaker. I mentioned Dylan Lobby being a special teams ace, and, uh, you know, there's other guys that could probably do that role. Yeah, Ty- Tyreek McAllister, two touchdowns on the night. Uh, had an 81-yard punt return that was fantastic. And, look, this is a guy that played running back, uh, you know, when, when he was in college. He was a guy who went to the CFL, uh, was an expert when it came to kick returns, and uh, now he's uh, actually listed as a wide receiver on the Raiders' depth chart. I have no doubt about it that he's going to make the roster. Uh, had the 81-yard punt return. That was fantastic. 32-yard catch and, and, and run for a touchdown. And it was really a tough catch. He just kind of contorted his body, made the catch, and, and got to the end zone. Bounced off the defender and got to the end zone. Um, he, he's just a guy that multiple times throughout training camp showed up. But you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe, you know, it's just a, a, a lower roster guy. It's not really someone that, uh, you know, is, is making a whole lot of a name for himself or a lot of noise. But um, throughout just the whole training camp and, and, and even preseason games, just consistently showing up. So uh, he wasn't someone that was really on my radar to be a a big-time contributor, but I think that he's shown enough to make the 53-man roster. I think that that's going to be a tough decision, but I think that tough decision is going to go to to him. I think it's going to favor him, and he'll end up on the roster. Amari Gaynor, the rookie, had a hell of a a, a game, 12 tackles, tackle for loss, and he called the defense. That was something that stood out to me that Antonio Pierce said after the game. He called the defense for the first time and did a really good job. Now, at the end of the game, he did have a 15-yard uh, penalty, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, kind of one of those bang-bang plays, and that was something that AP said that he's probably going to want back. But – Outside of that, I thought Amari Amar Gaynor did a really good job. Uh, 53 was all over the field, and uh, that, that could add some depth to that linebacking room that we know. You know, it's Robert Spillane. You know that uh, Divine Diablo is there. Uh, Luke Masterson is there. Tommy Eichenberg is, you know, still banged up a little bit. I'm not exactly sure 100% what his injury is. Honestly, wouldn't be shocked to see him maybe be IR'd, and then he just not play this year. And, you know, the kind of thought was that he was going to, red shirt this year anyway didn't think that he was going to be a big time contributor i still think eichenberg is going to be a good player but i i don't know the extent of this injury but like i said i wouldn't be shocked to see him end up getting ir'd byron young had a sack there was a byron young sighting matthew butler had a sack there was a matthew butler sighting i still think it's probably too late for those guys right i mean if anything they may end up back on the practice squad but i think that they're going to get waived i just even though they had a good game i just think it's too little too late right i mean it's, it's nice to show up but they didn't show up all all, uh, you know, preseason, and then they show up in preseason game number three. Uh, the Raiders finally got their first sack of the preseason in game number three. Uh, had multiple sacks, Byron Young, Matt Butler, and Charles Snowden. And Charles Snowden's been been showing up. He was showing up back in Costa Mesa. So I feel like Charles Snowden's pretty comfortable, uh, but Matt Butler and Byron Young wouldn't be shocked to see those guys 
waived. Uh, Sam Webb had a nice pass breakup that led to a Chris Smith interception. I thought that that was a nice play. Sam Webb obviously has been around before with the silver and black, has made the 53-man roster uh, with the Raiders back in Josh McDaniels' first year uh, with the team. And uh, Chris Smith, there was a sighting there, right? So there were certain guys that I wanted to see and see if they were going to make some plays, and they did. Uh, I don't know about Chris Smith. I don't know if he's going to make the roster or not, but the play that he made on Friday night uh, against the ones, right? Sam Webb and him made it against the ones. Brock Purdy was still in there when when he broke that ball up and and uh, Smith was able to come up with the interception and take it back to uh, the 41-yard line. The, the 49ers were about to score another touchdown, and the Raiders' defense prevented that. And, again, that was against the ones, so I thought that that was pretty impressive. And then uh, the last drive of the game, it was the Ramel Keaton show, right? It was uh, Carter Bradley to Ramel Keaton multiple times. Even when there was bad passes, Ramel Keaton found a way to, to, to haul it in, and uh, he had some nice toe-tap toe swag along the sidelines, getting his feet inbounds, did a really good job there. So I uh, thought that that was pretty impressive as well. Well, he's probably going to be a practice squad guy. I don't think he's done enough to make the 53 man roster, but he definitely did enough to, you know, make make his, uh, you know, his name, his case for himself uh, to stick around the team. But he'll probably end up being a special team or a, 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 a practice squad guy, at least off top. But all in all, I thought the game was a pretty fun, exciting game. Uh, the way that it ended was wild and crazy with the Niners lateraling it like 500 times. And if you know, it was probably dead about 500 times as well, but it was just a hell of a play that ended up with the offensive lineman uh, falling face first on, on the two yard line. It was just done. And uh, when it was all over and the game was over, there was Raiders, there was Niners laying on the on the field, just exhausted from that last play. Uh, but ends up in a 2020 24 24 tie. And uh, what a fitting way to finish the preseason, right? So I uh, thought it was really good. Thought it was a, a fun, entertaining game and a fun, entertaining way to finish up the, the preseason. Get ready now for the Chargers game one in SoFi Stadium coming up on September 8th. So that's what I got for you for segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts, 707-654-4693. That's coming up next here on the Locked On Raiders podcast. <laughs> Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of this show, which is FanDuel. And you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Well, now I got something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts. We have that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call with Raider Meatloaf. He's calling to talk about Friday's game versus the 49ers and a couple players that stood out to him. Here he is, Raider Meatloaf. Hey, Q, with uh, Raider Meatloaf here. Um, I was really happy about actually that last preseason game i know everything didn't go um perfect but more happy about that i saw how that we haven't seen um the whole preseason and i don't know who number 97 is i think it's his last name's robinson but he just was every every time he was putting pressure on the ball um getting through the line he was quick off the line um, I'm not saying that he could be a starter, but he could definitely, I think, fit in um, in some sort of death piece or death role on the team. So, uh, liked him. The the kid that was returning the kids, kicks, he was pretty electric, uh, made some really good plays. Uh, that running back, McAllister, I don't know if that's the same person that was returning kicks, but uh, he was good, man. I mean, there was there was a lot of talent out there, a lot of people that looked hungry to make a roster. So um, I know AP is going to have his hands full, but um, I'm excited, man. I, I can't wait for uh, for season to start. I just I just want everything to fly by, man. All right, take care. Milo, thanks for the call. Appreciate you. Yeah, 97 is Janarius, uh, Janarius Robinson. He could play. Right. He's going to be on the 53 man roster. He showed up and showed out. I don't know if he's got a suspension coming or not for uh, I think he got a DUI, but I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. But I know he could play. He's a big dude. Um, he's going to make the 53 McAllister. Uh, he was incredible, right? I mean, just with the punt return ability, uh, the wide receiver ability, he's a running back by nature. Uh, I believe that he's going to make the 53 man roster as well. Uh, you never really know, uh, you know, who's going to, who's going to get it done, but I just feel pretty comfortable with that big play of ability that he'll definitely make it as well. So just glad that the preseason's over and it's now uh, gearing up for the, the cutdowns. And of course, uh, the regular season starting on September 8th, but thanks for the call. Appreciate you. 
Up next, got a text from PK Raider reporting from Oakland, California. He said there's been a lot of talks around our quarterback situation lately when it comes to offense. One thing that hasn't been talked about much is our running back situation. We've been pretty fortunate the last few years with Josh Jacobs. How do you think Zamir White's going to do this season? Do you think we're going to have to draft someone next year? I feel like the running game is one of the keys to our offense doing well. Curious what your thoughts are. That's from PK Raider from Oakland Cali. And yeah, there's no doubt that the running back room is, is going to be important. They're going to need to establish the run. There's no doubt about that. Samir White, I think he's going to do okay, but he's got Alexander Madison as well. It's going to be a one-two punch. It's not going to be, you know, just a, a workhorse, kind of like what it's been with Josh Jacobs. It's going to be running back by committee, and uh, hopefully those two guys are going to be able to really excel. The one thing I like about Alexander Madison is that he's been in this scheme for a long time, and if they do it correctly, it could look really good. If you remember Friday night, the preseason game against the Niners, you saw how they were running, and they were running at ease against the, the Raiders. That's the same running zone blocking scheme, you know, that they're, they're going to be using. The offensive line is going to be blocking that way, and they're, they're using the outside run uh, for, for, you know, the, this offense. It could be a really good offense and really beneficial to the running game, but they have to be able to execute it correctly. You got to get to that spot, boom, one cut, and get downhill. It's just just that simple. So we'll see. I think Zamir White's going to be good at it, but that's definitely going to be a key to this Raiders offense this year is establishing the run game, being able to, to run the ball when everybody in the building knows that you want to run the ball. Thanks for that text. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Jacob in Hanford. He's calling to talk about two things, uh, and both of them, matter of fact, around the number former number seven overall pick, and then he also wants to talk about running backs. Here he is, Jacob in Hanford. What's up, Q? This is Jacob from Hanford. I got two questions for you. First one is about Tyree Wilson. Our number one pick from last year, or rather our first round pick from last year. We took him at seven. You know, we've, we've kind of beat this dead horse. And, you know, you get a top seven guy, you expect that guy to make an impact in the first couple of years. You know, this guy is supposed to be a contributor by day one, honestly. Uh, we haven't seen that from Tyree Wilson, and I know we're trying to be uh, positive. We're trying to keep an optimistic look and, you know, give him every opportunity, but. I feel like he's had lots of opportunities, and he's just not improving. The guy, I'm being honest, he looks slow in more more ways than one, and I don't want to be rude, but he just doesn't look good. He looks he looks what I just said. He, he it doesn't look good for him. Uh, the second thing, well, no, I'll, I'll, let's go off with Tyree Wilson. This thing with him, uh, we we took him we took him number seven overall. Now, we're not going to be able to trade a guy like that and get a seven overall. But what do you think we would be able to get for him if we did trade him, right? Uh, I, I'm thinking maybe somewhere around a fourth-round pick. Maybe we might have to include a seventh. Uh, but I, I think that we honestly ought to pull the trigger pretty soon because he's only going to go down in value the more that people see what he has because he's a strong guy, but he just plays slow. He's not... Really, his technique isn't really there, and it just he seems like the type of guy that's not really going to be able to think in for him. The second question that I have, running backs in the preseason, we've already got Demir White as a starter, and Alexander Madison is right there with him. Those two guys I don't expect to play in the third preseason game. Will we see Dylan Lauby? Will we see Sincere McCormick? And we will see Ms. Sincere McCormick. My question is more, which of those guys – is in danger of getting cut and has an opportunity to show out and earn a roster spot. And will it only be a special teams type thing or will it be, you know, a, a legitimate opportunity to play at running back as like maybe the number two guy or a third down back position? Um, those are my two questions, Q. The thing about Tyree Wilson, what do we get in a trade? Should we trade him? Uh, and the running back, who's going to be there? Sincere McCormick, does he look any good because the hype is insane, or it was insane last year before he got injured. You let me know, Q. Appreciate everything you do. You take it easy. Go Raiders. Thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And I don't know what the Raiders could get for Tyree Wilson, right? I mentioned him not playing on Friday. That kind of stood out to me, and that means that, you know, either he's very comfortable or they're comfortable with him on the roster, or maybe they are trying to move and they didn't want him to get injured. I mean, I, there's, there's a couple, couple of different train of thoughts there. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN said that the Raiders should look to move him. Um, but like I said, I don't know what he would fetch right now because he hasn't put anything out there. Uh, so, you know, that could be, I don't know. I, I just, I mean, your guess is as good as mine at this point, you know, and I don't know if Jeremy Fowler was hearing that the Raiders are trying to move him or if he was just spitballing. I just don't know. But you might be able to get anywhere from like a third to a fifth round. 
You know, I, I don't know. Um, as far as the running game, um, Sincere McCormick will probably be on the outside looking in. Uh, I thought that Dylan Lobby was going to be a, a, you know, a shoe in, but now I'm not that sure. Uh, obviously, they've got Zamir White. They've got uh, Alexander Madison. They've got Amir Abdullah. Uh, maybe Sincere McCormick could be a, a guy that make it. Maybe Britton Brown. Maybe it's Britton Brown is on the outside looking in. Um, there's, there's definitely a, a, a case to be said right there. But like I said, I thought Dylan Lobby was going to be that dude. I don't really feel that comfortable at this stage of the game. But thank you for that call. I do appreciate you. Up next, and just got time for a couple more. Got a text from Taylor from the 503. That's Portland, Oregon. He said, I've been out of town for my wedding, which fell on the same day as second round of the draft. Haven't had a chance to listen to your post-draft or during the draft coverage yet, but I had thoughts on Brock Bowers. <laughs> this is really uh, going back. Uh, Adam Rank made a what team should do mock draft and gave us Brock Bowers. The only mock that had him 13 with Las Vegas. He commented that guess he likes to run the 12 personnel and Bowers in that role for our team is going to be straight fire. Can't deny the talent. We need more playmakers on offense. The last two years, we've gotten some ultra talent in round one and rock solid round two picks. If they're all developed correctly, we should be cooking with grease. Might just need some primetime quarterback for 25. You know what I'm saying? Much love, Raider Nation. Uh, that's Taylor from the 503. Uh, that's going all the way back to the draft. And yeah, I mean, that's Brock Bowers is that dude. He is a, definitely a playmaker. And yeah, you know, I think that the Raiders are going to need a, a quarterback in 2025. Is it a primetime quarterback? I don't know. And I do know what you mean. I'm picking up what you're laying down, talking about Shador Sanders. I, I don't know if the Raiders will be in position to get him. Uh, there's a couple guys out there. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Jalen Miller from Alabama. I think he's going to do really well this year under Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach there, uh, who helped develop Michael Penix. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and go through this year before we worry about the draft. And hopefully we're not talking about the draft till you know, late December, maybe early January, or even uh, after, you know, a playoff run. That would that'd be great to talk about the draft at that stage of the game. But Taylor, thanks for the text. I do appreciate you. Got a call from Raider Big C in LA calling to talk about this team. Now that training camp preseason, it's all over and had a message for Raider Nation. Gee, it's Raider Big C from LA. Finally, the time has come. Training camp is going to be done. Preseason is done. Now it's time to show up. Like AP said, it's time to stand up. I was leaning towards Minshew the whole time. At one point, I went on O'Connell, but I kept telling myself, the one thing that I kept feeling annoyed when I went to go see a couple games last year in person, so you see more of the field than when you see on TV, of course, but O'Connell can't and will not run at all. I'll take Minshew. So I think it's a good choice. I think he's going to give us that spark. I think this team is ready to show up and stand up. I'll be there week one. Just got my tickets. Just got my tickets. I'll be in the 200 level. Wheelchair section. But I think we need all Raider Nation to stand up. Let's go to SoFi. Black it out like we always do. Go to the home games. Black it out. <clears throat> if you're on the road, black it out. Get a big group. Black out that section if you can. Because this team needs to see Raider Nation stand up. And this is the call to all fans. You either like the quarterback, don't like the quarterback, this drama, no. Right out, week one. Everyone starts at zero and zero. It's now our time. It's their time to show why we are the one nation and the only nation, Raider Nation. I hope everyone hears this call and understands we need to be there for them. And why? We bleed for the own life. Like the saying goes, Raider Nation, win, lose, or tie. Raiders till I die. Hope to see everyone week one in LA and be in LA. Q, hopefully you're out there as well. I think it's time that y'all need to come out there instead of being home. But hopefully y'all can work something with your radio station. Raider Nation, remember, just win, lose, or tie. Raider Nation till I die. Raiders. Raider Big C, thanks for the call. And, yeah, I mean, Minshew having that mobility I think is a big difference. You know, I mean, that's probably what separated the two quarterbacks because neither one of them were fantastic. So I think that the just the extra mobility and the fact that he's a veteran maybe could provide a spark to start the season is really what ended up separating them. Uh, you know, and, and they do need to get off to a hot start and really win that first game in SoFi Stadium versus the Chargers. And I have no doubt Raider Nation is going to show up and show out. My question is, are the Raiders going to show up and show out? 
they're not very successful at SoFi for some reason. Raider Nation's always there, but they're like one in five at SoFi, which to me blows my mind, right? Because they 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 have so much uh, fans that go go to SoFi, and they're playing twice there, right? They're playing the Chargers week one, and then al- also, what, October 20th, they're playing against the the Rams there at SoFi. So it would be nice for them to get a couple wins in SoFi this year. But thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. We'll close out from a text from the Raven. Say, good day, Q. It's the Raven in SoCal. Friday show, uh, while speaking about your career in radio broadcasting, you gave props to the great Greg Papa, who the Raiders should still have as their radio voice. However, I wanted to also give love to someone that younger Raider Nation generation may not have been exposed to, that's being the late, great Bill King. Bill King was the voice of the Raiders from 66 to 92, calling all three Super Bowl wins, and even more impressive, during the stretch of that time, was the radio voice of the Raiders, Warriors, and the A's all at the same time. The man was gifted as a radio play-by-play announcer and as an Oakland native who later in life transplanted to Southern California. I've been blessed to have been able to listen to two radio icons who allowed the listener to see what they're hearing on the radio, both the late, great Chick Hearn and the late, great Bill King. Raider Nation for life. That's the Raven. Thanks so much for that text. And yeah, Bill King was fantastic. He wasn't the soundtrack for me. That was Greg Papa, but I I know that Bill King was fantastic. I definitely know that. So uh, the Raiders have been blessed. Uh, and Jason Horowitz has told me this as well, and he's the voice right now, the silver and black. The Raiders have been blessed to have some really good voices as as they're, you know, the great greats. Bill King, you know, Greg Papa, uh, Brent Musburger. I'm not a big fan of Brent Musburger, but he's also an icon. And, and now to have Jason Horowitz, I think he's got an opportunity to, you know, really establish himself as the guy uh, with the Raiders. And, you know, it's, it's a new culture, a new generation, a uh, younger audience. And so he can really grow with this team over years. But yeah, the Raiders have had some of the best uh, callers, you know, the, the, as far as uh, play callers and, and uh, you know, radio and TV and everything uh, over a long time. You know, a lot of teams don't have as many great, you know, play by play voices like the Raiders have had. So really good stuff. Raven, thanks for the text. I do appreciate you. And that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, coming up tomorrow, we'll have more news and notes of the day. We'll have more calls and texts and we'll see if the Raiders start, you know, trimming their roster as they got to get prepared for that 53 man roster. That's going to come up. Uh, on Tuesday at 1 p.m. So uh, we'll, of course, have plenty to talk about here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.